Hi, it's Alexis Hasselberger, time management and productivity coach. You know, there's something that I say a lot that some people think is a little morbid, but I do not. And if you've ever heard me speak, maybe you've been to a conference where I spoke or been in a workshop that I led or something like that, you've probably heard me say this. And here's what it is. We are all gonna die with a big long list of things we didn't do. Every single one of us, you, me, the most productive people on earth, we are all gonna die with a big long list of things we didn't do. And that's okay, that's just part of life. I think that life would probably be pretty boring without it if we weren't striving for things, um, if there was nothing else we wanted that we wanted to accomplish. I think that would be pretty boring. But some people get really, really stressed out about this idea that um, you know we are gonna die without having done all the things that we wanted to do. And so I thought you know I would talk just a little bit more <laughs> death, right, for a second, because I think that it's really important because it informs how we live. And there is something that you may have heard about the, the top five common, most common regrets that you hear from people who actually are dying, right? And let's hope that's none of us right now, that we are all going to live long lives. But I want to make sure that I don't die with any of these regrets that are really the most common ones out there. And so I want to share them with you so that you can be thinking about them too, because they might inform the way that you start living your life also. So the first regret is, that many, many people have is that they wish they had lived their life according to their own true selves instead of what was expected of them by other people, right? And life is all about decisions, but so often we are acting um, in accordance with other people's values, in accordance with other people's goals, striving for things that, that actually don't have a whole lot to do with what we actually care about. And so my, you know, my goal when I work with people is to help them to to both identify what those goals and those values are so that they can align their time with the things that they actually care about. And so while I don't you know, put it like this, like the goal really is we don't want to die with that regret. We want to die, we want to die knowing that we lived according to our own values and our own goals. Now, another thing that people say all the time on their deathbeds is I wish I hadn't worked so hard right? And I bet that this, you know, a lot of us, if we feel that right now, right? Um, even if we are not thinking about, about death right now, but we wish we hadn't have worked so hard. And I think this makes so much sense, right? Nobody is lying there thinking, man, I wish I would have worked harder. Um, we're thinking, man, I wish I would have spent more time with my friends and family. I wish I would have, you know, let myself live a little bit more because here's the truth. There will always, always, always be more work, right? You, me, everyone else, we could work 16 hours a day, 20 hours a day until the end of time. And there will always be a full day's work tomorrow, right? We actually have to be the ones that create some boundaries around our time so that we're spending our time not only working, but also doing the things that we care about, the things that we enjoy, the things that fulfill us. Because if we keep waiting until that day when the work is done, well, we are going to die with that day having never shown up because there will always, always, always be more work to do. Now, the third one that often shows up is that, you know, I wish I had been able to express my feelings better to others. And this is an interesting one, right? That, that shows up, what, why are we thinking that when we're, we're dying? Why? I wish I would have been able to express my feelings. And what I think about this is that we spend a whole lot of time stuck in rumination, right? We are thinking about what we want to say, should be saying, why did this person say this thing to me? And that just creates this kind of circular um, pressure cooker going on inside of us. And it wastes a lot of time. We spend a lot of time thinking about these things. I mean, how many times have you been like in the shower and you're just replaying a conversation and thinking about all the things that you should have said, but didn't, right? I mean, I think all of us have done this before. And so what I think here is, you know, something that I say often to, to my clients and to others is that awkward situations deserve awkward conversations. So if you're spending a bunch of time, like imagining or thinking about what someone else might be feeling, or if you are stewing in your emotions, usually the best thing that we can do is just have that hard conversation. Just get it out there explicitly. Now, a lot of times we realize that actually we were just making up stories in our own head and there really was no big issue here, but sometimes, right, and maybe more often than not, we find ourselves in a position where we actually are able to let those feelings go, to share them with someone else, to have a conversation about it, to get some closure. And while that can be scary and hard, it also is going to get you closer to what you want to be doing, right? You want you don't want to be spending all that time, um, you know, thinking about all this stuff and wasting all that energy with all those bottled up emotions. You want to be able to get them out, work through them, and move past it. 
Now, the next regret that people often have on their deathbeds is that they wish they had stayed in touch with their friends, right? That they had spent more time with their friends and that they had stayed in touch over the years. And I think this one is really interesting because so many people that I work with, you know, they, they say they don't have time for friends, right? They don't spend any time with their friends. They don't have time for them. Um, they want to see their friends, but they've got so much else going on, right? And this comes back to, yeah, there's always going to be a lot going on. And it's about the choices that we make, right? About about making time for people. Now, one little tip here that I always suggest is that, is there any way for us to kind of create routine in those relationships? And I know this sounds like a Debbie Downer, no fun kind of a thing, but really like if you want to see your friends, it's so hard sometimes, right? Everybody's busy. And so you say, hey, I want to get together with these three friends. We all look at our calendars and the first time we can figure out how to, when to meet is six months from now. And then we get there and somebody has some kind of emergency and they can't make it. And we just you know, scrap the whole plan. Instead, what if we routinize these things? What if, you know, with your three best friends, you just have a monthly uh, dinner date, right? Whoever can show up, shows up. It's always on the fourth Thursday of the month or whatever it is, we work it into our schedules. Or if you're trying to spend more time maybe with your partner or significant other, having a weekly date night, right? A time set aside where you're just going out together. Maybe you're not going out and spending a lot of money. Maybe you're just, you know, during the pandemic, my husband and I were just taking long walks with a cocktail and a to-go cup, right? We weren't going anywhere. Uh, but having that time set aside meant that we were spending time with each other. Whereas if you have to think about it every time, if it's a big, you know, activation energy to make it happen, then it's much harder to do. So there is a way to, to spend time with your friends and the people around you, even if you feel like you have no time, but it does take a little bit of pre-thought and often a little bit of routine. And then lastly, that fifth um, dying regret that people often feel is that they wish they had let themselves be happier. And I think the phrasing of this is so key. They're not saying, I wish I was happier. They're saying, I wish I had let myself be happier. And that is a big difference because this is about choice. It's about agency. Now, of course, we cannot control, you know, our mood all of the time, but when people say that they let, uh, they wanted to let themselves be happier, I am thinking about choices because this isn't about life circumstances necessarily. This is about allowing yourself the space, the availability to actually be happier, to make choices that are better for you, that are better for your family, and that make you feel better overall. So again, it's not about, I wish I was happier. That's something that we have less control over, right? There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of research about set points around happiness, but allowing ourselves to be happier, to say within the bounds of what we had, I wish I had let myself be happier. That is about choices. So I don't want you to have any of these regrets. I don't want to have any of these regrets. And so I'm working hard not to, right? I'm doing things that are helping me to not have these regrets. And I want the same for you. Uh, if you want more content like this, or if you want to work with me, I mean, go ahead and reach out. There's, you know, links right down there um, in, the, in, uh, in the description. Uh, but if you just want more content like this, if you want to be thinking about these concepts more, go ahead and subscribe. Hello, it's the video editor here. I just want to quickly say that only about 11% of you guys are actually subscribed. So it would actually be a big help if you were to uh, subscribe.